ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another video. And today I'm going to be getting into the Word of God. And I'm going to be giving a devotional out of the book of Matthew. And I want to talk about how we can be more effective witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ. God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. He has the best for us. And he wants to use us as his ambassadors, as his showpiece. Because you know what? We go out and we live that life, that Christian life, and we take the high road and we follow Jesus Christ, you know what he does? He begins to shine in us and others begin to know it. So I want to talk about how we can be more effective witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ. So without further ado, I'm going to be jumping right into the Word of God, and I'm going to be reading Matthew chapter 5. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse 13. But before I jump into the Bible, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button below and jump on board. I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe and, and be a part of what we do here. Also, if you could put a like on this video, it would help this video out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. So anyway, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, what does it say? It's addressing Christians. And it says this, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. The scriptures say we are the salt of the earth. Now, salt is preservation. It preserves. It keeps something. It makes it last. It brings that strength to whatever it is that the salt is being used to do. It strengthens it, makes it better keeps it, preserves it. We can be preserved. And how do we do that? Surrender our life to Christ. Put Jesus Christ first. Make him preeminent in our lives. And once we do that, you know what, beloved? And we put Jesus first. You seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. It says, all these things shall be added unto you. What does the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11 say? It says that we overcame him by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. You know how you overcome the enemy when he attacks you? It's being a good testimony. It's putting Christ first in your life. It's living for Jesus. It's letting your light shine, being the salt of the earth. And what happens is people will begin to notice it. And when you're an effective witness, you know what happens? Your testimony will not only help others come to Christ, but it'll help you to overcome the attacks of the devil. So what does it say? You are the salt of the earth. You know, he's comparing you with like salt. Salt preserves, right? And it says, but if the salt had lost its savor, its saltiness, its strength, you know what? It can't preserve anymore. And you won't be preserved if you are not staying close to Jesus. If you're capitulating, if you are following the ways of the world, then what happens is when we do that, we become duplicitous with the evil of this world. We don't want to do that, beloved because that makes us culpable as Christians. But God wants us to surrender, put him first, and live for Jesus. Not perfect, we got grace, we got mercy. God knows we make mistakes. God knows that we have this flesh, this Adamic nature. We're not perfect, but he's looking for us to keep Jesus first. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Don't be ashamed to admit that you are a child of God. Don't be worried and have trepidation about telling people that you are a believer. Because you know what? When you declare and you confess Jesus before men, Jesus said, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. Isn't that exciting? So God wants us to be salt. He wants us to have a good testimony. He wants us to have a testimony that's preserved and it's enduring. You know, he wants us to live a life that's godly, you know, in perpetuity. He wants us to live that life of obedience. And you know what? When you obey God, he's not only going to use you as a testimony and reach so many people, but he's also going to bless you because you cannot obey God without being blessed. He's going to bless you over and over and over again. What is obedience? It's not living a perfect life and being under the law being religious. Obedience is following the leading of the Holy Spirit, flaws and all repenting when we make mistakes, get up, keep going. But hearing the voice of God, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. You know what a disciple is? Disciple is a learner and follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are his disciple and we need to let our light shine. And that's the next verse. But what does it say? You have the salt of the earth, Matthew 5, verse 13. 
But if the salt has lost its savor, its saltiness, its preservation, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. It's a waste of time. But to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. You can't use that salt anymore if it doesn't preserve. And we can't be used either if we're not putting God first and we're not living for Jesus and we're not allowing God to work in our lives and we begin to drift away from the Lord. What happens is that, you know, we cannot be usable for the kingdom of God if we're beginning to compromise our convictions. Amen. Now we'll go, look at what verse 14 says. Yeah, the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know what? You're the light of the world, beloved. You're his showpiece. You're his jewel. You are his child. He died for you. He shed his blood for you that you would come to him through the ministry of reconciliation. And what happens? Let our faith, let our faith walk be without dissimulation. Let it be a true, genuine walk with God, flaws and all. When people see you make mistakes and still be humble and praising God, you know what, that's a powerful testimony too because they see that we're real, we're genuine. And you know what, we make mistakes, but we have Jesus. We're not perfect, we're just forgiven. We're saved by the perfect one, and that's Jesus Christ. But he says, let your light shine. He wants you to shine. He wants me to shine. How do we shine? Through the Holy Spirit. How do we shine when we walk in the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, faith, patience. These are the things that are shown and demonstrated and manifested through the Holy Spirit. And beloved, God wants to bless you more than you can imagine. He has an eternal reward for you in heaven, a mansion reserved for you already, ready to be revealed in the last times. He has it for you place in heaven for eternity if you are saved if you're saved by the blood of the lamb if you've been redeemed by jesus christ but he wants you to be the light light what does it do when it's dark you can't see anything in the room but when you turn the light on it gets bright and you can see everything you know what people are walking in darkness but when you walk in that room you are the light some people aren't going to like you very much they're not going to be happy but you know what we need to continue to praise God, even if we're persecuted, because the scriptures say, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So Christians will be persecuted. Even though you're the light, even though you follow Christ, you will get persecuted from time to time because even Jesus, Jesus got persecuted. You know that? And so you're not exempt. I'm not exempt. But the good news is God will protect us. And you know, how we react to these persecutions will be an effective witness as well. If we can love our enemies and pray for them that despitefully use us, that's a testimony. Again, we're being the light. So how do you become the light to people? Be the, If you can't preach the word, be the word. Show kindness, show love, love your enemies, pray for them. Take the high road, you know? Show Jesus is real in your life. Let the Holy Spirit just take over your life and don't be ashamed of it. Let God's light shine. And you know what? People will see it. What does the scripture say? Yeah, the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city cannot be hid, especially on a hill with all the bright lights and the buildings and towers and, you know, a city, you can see it. You know, if you fly in an airplane, you know, you can see darkness. But when you go over a city, you're going to see the lights everywhere and it's bright. Even when you're in an airplane, you can see a city. So a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are like a city. You're the light. God wants you to let it shine. What does it say in verse 15? It says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. They don't put it underneath something and hide it, but they put it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. You know what? When you put a candle out, you want to lighten things up a little bit, bring a little brightness into the place. You know what? You are that candle. You are that light. You are that salt. You are what God wants to use for the lost. He wants to use you. Not only does he want to bless you, and that's why sometimes he allows us to go through some stuff, because trials takes the impurities out of us. It removes that dross, the negative characteristics that we have. Because when we get more and more filled with Jesus and we go through these fiery trials, the more we become like him. And you know what? And the world is going to see it. And we're like a candlestick that lights the house up. Now, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine before men. Let men see it, that they may see your good works 
and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You don't have to boast about your works and tell people how godly you are, how you go to church every week, how do you how you witness every week, and how you give, and how you, that's not how you show your works. It's let your light shine that they may see your good works. You don't boast about it. You let them see it through your testimony, through your actions, through your godliness. And the more you become like that, the more you occupy till he comes, because Jesus is coming back soon. God is going to reward your faithfulness. Souls are going to get saved. He is going to bless you. It's going to take you to places that no man can take you, and you're going to reach your God-given destiny. If this devotion encouraged you, again, I encourage you to put a comment below, subscribe to this channel, and may God bless you as you continue to walk with Jesus Christ.